Now, why is this ATO container awesome? Well, if you wanted, it would actually fit completely in the door. Uh, of course, I want room to work on my electronics and dosing and other things. So I'm gonna leave it on the outside of the tank. It'll line up nice on the outside of the tank. But if you really wanted, you could put it in this compartment in the door, especially if you had all your electronics outside the tank somewhere else. That'd probably be a good way to store 16 gallons, much more than a, about the eight gallons that you get right there. But what I really wanted to talk about today was why I got an epaulet shark instead of a bamboo shark. So I'd say bamboo sharks are probably the most popular small shark that you can buy for an aquarium. And they come in a couple varieties, but you'll generally see like the banded uh, cat shark and a few others kind of of that group. And you don't see epaulet sharks that much. And I think the reason is because the banded cat shark eggs are very, very readily available and typically can be had for about 60 bucks. And often the pet stores will buy the eggs and hatch the sharks and then sell people the sharks once they're hatched. Or some peep times people will just buy the eggs. Now the epaulet sharks, generally, um, the only places I've been able to find them have been um, places like from Aura and then sold through their distributors like Live Aquaria. And you typically don't buy them as an egg, you buy them as a hatched um, young adult. And they're much more expensive. So uh, at least mine was around 450 bucks. And so that's, you know, pretty expensive for something to put into your aquarium. Um, most people don't buy fish that are too much more than like 120. And so that's probably a contributor to it. Now the reason why I picked an epaulet shark over a banded cat shark, I actually had a banded cat shark for a short period of time, um, but the banded cat shark moves a lot more from my understanding than an epaulet shark. And from my experience, though I've never had a full grown banded cat shark, my experience is that's pretty much the case. The epaulet shark is very specifically called the walking shark, though there's a bunch of uh, sharks that, that they do call walking sharks. But this shark basically spends the entire life um, sitting on the floor. So he only swims on very rare occasions. And these occasions are typically when he knows he's about to get fed. Maybe he'll make some noise and movement and he'll think he's about to get fed. Um, but right now, like most of the time, he just rests. And that's actually really good for a reef aquarium. I've heard that banded uh, kind of the cat sharks um, they actually move a lot more and they'll swim more in the water column. And so you need a bigger tank for that. For this tank, um, the size is less, it's still important, um, but it's less important because then are things like, like water quality or maybe multiple layers of the tank for things for them to, to explore um, because they just, they don't, they don't move that much. Um, now he does like the smooth floor and he will cruise around at night for a little bit when it's time to find food. And I will find him walking around in crevices looking for snails to eat. So they definitely want a geometrically complex environment, but they just, they just aren't as active. And that's perfect for a tank like this. The other thing is, you know, these epaulet sharks, they live really in the most shallow areas of the reef and the tide pools, and they can get caught um, outside of the water for up to an hour and actually survive. And so, an aquarium is really, it's almost like a tide pool. I mean, it's, it's a small area, it's isolated. Um, there's some critters in there. And so it's the closest to that environment. So basically for these reasons, even though epaulet sharks can get maybe a little bit bigger, maybe up to like six inches bigger than the cat sharks for a small shark, uh, for a tank like this, I just think an epaulet shark is a better choice. And so far I've been very pleased with it. Um, he's not too active. He never has looked like he doesn't have enough space. You can tell when a fish doesn't have enough space because they'll kind of pace. Of course, I don't buy fish that need anything greater than an 80 gallon tank. So I'm kind of double, double sizing for all these fish. Never seen them pace, but I've, I've had fish before that did some pacing. And it's kind of stressful. And for this shark, he doesn't do any pacing. It's the perfect size for him. Sorry about the baby screaming in the background, but it's bath time. If you have more questions about the epaulet shark and why I went with this shark instead of the other one, 
let me know. And yes, there is a big cost difference between this shark and the other type, but when you look, look at the overall life of the animal and how much you're gonna spend on tanks, and you know, eventually I will get a bigger tank than this for him. Um, the actual price of the animal, you know, you're talking about maybe a 300 to $350 difference. That's really nothing over the long term. So that basically summarizes why I got an epaulette shark instead of a bamboo shark this time around. Uh, next, we're going to talk a little bit about how I've increased the capacity of my auto top-off tank. I basically found these 16-gallon auto top-off tanks um, online, and there's a link in the description below. They're basically for RVs, and I'll show you how to drill it out and set it up and increase your capacity. This container comes set as 16 gallons, and it has these fittings already glued in. Now this one is going to be big enough for your pump, so what we're going to do is we're going to drill out that hole. And what you need is a basically a circular hole saw that uh, fits that hole perfectly, and it's going to depend on the one that you buy, and we'll drill it out. Now one thing you'll notice is there's this little peg here, so that makes it kind of hard to drill in directly. Um, so we'll have to find a good way to avoid that. So I removed the tip there. So now we can drill in the hole uh, directly. And so now we just have this piece. And there we are, right through the hole. Now what you'll see once you drill a hole through is down in there, you'll find your piece and you'll actually find an awful lot of uh, materials. So you can either get that out by flushing it out with water or by holding it upside down and just trying to grab everything out. So we made a mistake already. I thought that this pump would fit inside that hole. The base of the pump does, but not this little knob here on the side. So a good tip of advice for doing this is you want to check and make sure that your pump actually fits inside the drill bit that you're gonna cut the hole. Uh, this one is a two and a half inch drill bit, so that'll work if you're using the PMUP pump from Neptune Systems. If you have a smaller pump, you might be able to get it down there. Uh, now I'm just going to have to find a way to close up that. And then I'm going to drill my own hole, um, probably basically right in the center here. And maybe I'll use this just for like filling in the corner or something. So put that in right there and see how it goes. As you can see here, you definitely need a funnel. Uh, I bought a funnel online, I'll send a link down below for that, but a pretty large funnel will make your life easy. So now we have some water in there, and we also have it perfectly sized for this little slot. Like I said before, if you want to put it in your tank, the great thing about this vertical size is that it will fit in the control container or compartment of your Red Sea Peninsula 650. The vertical shape of it's really great because it means that the amount of water at the very bottom that can't get sucked up by the pump at the very bottom is a very small. The other great thing is this thing lasts for 14 days before having to be refilled, whereas this old one here, I had to refill every week.